Good afternoon, everyone. A warm welcome, a warm Holy Cross welcome. As a Mass is about to begin shortly, I wanted to mention that, um, as I said last week, we're going to have a guest with us today. We're so blessed to have Father Alfonso Kim with us. Uh, he's a Marinor missionary from the only American Society of Missions that we have, and their base is in Asani. And as part of our Missionary Co-op Appeal collection and guest speaker we have every year. Um, so the collection, remember I mentioned this last week, that we had for early July. We were just coming back to church at that time. So we understand that, um, of course, uh, many were not able to give. But if those who did give shouldn't feel any obligation to give today. But we're so happy that he's going to speak about his own personal story, which is extraordinary his own call to mission, and ours. So uh, I do want to say that the second collection will be for the missionary work of Marino, and that uh, that will be the second collection, even though there's no envelope for it. I want to make sure that you knew that. So uh, Father Alfonso Kim will certainly tell you more about himself as, as we celebrate this Mass. It will begin shortly. I'll be available for confessions in just a moment. Good afternoon. Please rise and join with us in singing the entrance in It is City of God.
St. Paul to the Romans. O oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known, for who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Said to them, but 
Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed, loosened in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. good morning. My name is, oh, good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Father Alfonso Kim. I am a minor priest. I'm here, thank you, I'm here to share with you the testimony and also the story of, about mission. God is generous to us. And I'm going to tell you what is Marinol is about. Probably some of you know Marinos, don't you? Then I'm going to tell you how God is calling us to be a missionary. And also I'm going to share with you how I end up being a missionary, a priest, and what I am doing in present moment. Mary Knoll is known as Catholic Foreign Mission Society of America. It's the only missionary society born in the USA, meaning it is your church, belongs to US Catholic Church. If we go back in the history, before 1900, the Church of the United States was getting help from other countries because the Church of the United States were poor church. After 1900, the Church got richer, and there was two priests, one from Boston and one from North Carolina. They had a dream to build a missionary society. And they said to the Bishop of the United States also, now we are rich, we should go out and evangelize and build the church and help other people to stand up. And this was the dream of the United States Church. 1907, they went to Rome asking for the permission. 1911, finally, Pope Pius X, Vatican, gave the green light to U.S. Church, you can form a missionary church. 1918, first missionary was sent to China. Do you know what happened in the year 1917-1918? There were another pandemic like this, Spanish flu. They were, was not like this. At that time, about the, according to the scientists, they said 50 million people died during those pandemic. We were asking questions to each other. Should we go or not during this pandemic, 1918? U.S. Catholic Church said, go and save people. Many priests and brothers and sisters went to mission to China, first mission, and many of them died, died in young age. At that time, U.S. Catholic Church was helping about 48 countries around the world. There were about 1,300 priests and brothers and 1,600 sisters. 109 years later, Today, there are about less than 300 priests and brothers 
and less than 400 sisters. We are living in different time. After 109 years later, the Church of the United States were very generous church. We were able to build many schools, many hospitals, and evangelize many people around the world. But still, with the less number of priests and brothers and sisters, God's mission continues in different way. And I'm going to tell you how God is calling us, each of us, to be a man. If you are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you are God's missionary. We are born missionary, and we are shared, and we should do good things to each other. And I'm going to tell you how God is still calling us to be a missionary and how God is called call me to be a priest and missionary. Probably all of you have a normal and healthy heart, don't you? Yeah, that's why you are alive. That's why you are here. When God formed you in your mother's womb, healthy and normal heart and strong heart and that was calling from God but when God made me in my mother's womb God only gave me three chambers heart a normal heart has four chambers but God made me with three chambers because of that I was very difficult time growing up. I had very difficult time childhood life. Because of abnormal heart, I couldn't breathe normally. I was always blue because of lack of oxygen. I couldn't run. I could not be a normal child. I was born in Korea, but I grew up in Argentina. Then from Argentina, we immigrated again to the United States. So I grew up in New York City, uh, 82nd and 2nd Avenue. After finishing my I went to seminary. And after the Catholic Church of the United States sent me to work in Japan as a missionary. I worked many years in Japan. Then from Japan, I crossed to India. And after in India, Marino, the Catholic State, asked me to come back to work in the state. After working several years in the United States, again, the church sent me to mission to Orient. I went to China and Taiwan. After working many years there, they asked me to come back. So now, presently, I am working in the United States, different churches diocese, telling story. The story that I'm telling you is your story. We are able to do mission work because of your generosity and your prayer. Without your prayer and your generosity, the church cannot survive. And also, we cannot do mission work. When God made me with three chambers hard, I had a very difficult time growing up. I was always sick, and my parents thought my sickness was part of growing up, because many, we all grow up with pain and getting sick. I was stuck getting better. 1970, when we decided to leave Argentina, we had to do physical examination. And the doctor in Korea said to my parents, your son's heart sounds very strange. Only in the U.S. in late 1960 began to do open heart surgery. Outside of the United States, opening up somebody's chest or opening up somebody's heart meant that the person was going to die. 
So that day in Argentina, they put a camera inside of my body, went to the heart, and that's how they discovered that I had three chambers heart. And the doctor said, you need to have the surgery. We have to reconstruct your heart. And my mother, especially, didn't want me to have the surgery. But the doctor said, you need a surgery, but we are not going to guarantee that you're going to survive. But I wanted to have the surgery. The reason is because I wanted to be a normal child. I wanted to run. I wanted to play. Because of my heart, I couldn't do that. I couldn't breathe. And my mother was afraid of losing me. But I said to my parents, I want to have the surgery. And I said to them, I don't say, doctor, I was not afraid of dying. And they said to me, what do you know about life and death? Yeah, I had no experience of life and death. I had no understanding of life and death. But I wanted to be a healthy child. And I said, the life that I had that moment, and even now, the life that I have now, doesn't belong to me. It belongs and it is in God's hand. And God is the one who controls me. If he wants me to be to survive, probably God is going to give me another chance. It was my time to come, so I had to go. And I said to my parents, I was not afraid of to die. But before the surgery, the night before the surgery, I prayed to God and I said to God, I am afraid of dying. Now I understand how Jesus felt before his crucifixion. He prayed to his father and God and saying, I don't want to drink this chalice. I don't want to die. But if this is your will, I will accept it. And I said to God, give me one more chance to see this light. If you do, I will sacrifice my whole life for the priesthood. God was listening to my prayer from the beginning, and God was answering my prayer. I'm asking all of you, keep praying, because God is listening to you, and God is answering your prayer at this moment. And God is going to show the power of prayer when you need the most. When I need the most, God gave me one more chance. So that's why I'm asking all of you, keep praying. Don't say to God, don't complain to God, oh God, you never listen to me. God is listening. God knows what you need more. God knows you more than you know yourself. And God is going to answer and God is going to give you. When I was young, a child, I had a three dreams and also three desires when I grew up. At that time, we were not a Catholic family. So always I had a three dreams and three desires. My first dream was I wanted to be a medical doctor. The reason is because I was sick and I saw many people and many child, many children and I wanted to help. Second dream was I wanted to get married to a beautiful nurse. And my third dream was together with my wife, I wanted to go to mission, especially to India. I had no idea where India was located, but I wanted to go to India. I pray hard. I dream, I, I work hard, I did my best to achieve my dream. But I didn't do it according to my will. And I said, when I pray, do it your will, God. And these are my prayer. Looking back, standing here, my life, again, 
God was listening to my prayer, and God answered all my three desires and three dreams. First of all, one thing to be a medical doctor, I became a medical doctor. Well, we consider priest soul doctor. Second dream, one thing to get married to a beautiful nurse. I am married today to beautiful church. I'm married or we don't work in India. But I end up working and living in India. My three dreams, when I put everything in God's hand, impossible for us, but everything is possible for God. God answered all my three dreams. So I'm asking, especially young people, have a big dream. Dream big. Work hard. Pray to God. Put your life in God's hands, not in your hands, but God's hands, and tell God, this is my prayer. And I want to be like, you know, this is my dream. And God is going to answer your prayer. Last week, Gospel, Canaanite woman came to Jesus asking, begging, please heal my daughter. The disciple wanted to send her away. And Jesus said, your faith heal your daughter. This is how generous God we believe. God is so generous, is God is going to give us more than what we ever ask. I'm going to tell you what I did as a priest. And I did many things, but I'm going to share one story. I work mostly in Asia, in Japan and you know, China. Then I went to a different country to help. And also we got the request from Vatican. Please send some people to work in Cambodia. Probably many of you know what happened during the Vietnam War. Cambodia was destroyed. And then there was a man called Paul Pak. And he was very intellectual person, very well educated person. And he said, I'm going to create a new society in Cambodia. So he began to kill every intellectual people there. First of all, any people who knew how to read and write. How many of you can read and write? Raise your hand. Yeah. All of you will be there. Just looking at you, anyone who wear eyeglasses, was executed. Because, meaning, the person was able to read. Sisters and priests, the church was wiped out. Because why? they know how to read. And there were many orphans. So they said, go and do something. So I helped to establish an orphanage. And the children who came to this orphanage, they are very special children. Many of them were born infected with HIV and AIDS. And I said, 1999 and 2000, and then after that, many years, I came back to U.S. And I went to different dioceses and different churches and different states, telling this story. Please help me to save these children. The Church of the United States is so generous. So many help came, and I was able to help so many children. They are now grown up. They're living well. But now we have different problems. Because of pandemic, coronavirus, children, especially South Sudan, in African country, they are not afraid of dying of this virus. But they are afraid of dying of hunger. And please, friends, said, please send some help. We need to feed these children. We need to give some water. 
They are not afraid of dying of COVID-19. They are afraid of dying of hunger. What is our mission? Our mission is to help to save people's lives. And Jesus said today in the Gospel, if you do that, I am going to give you the key to the kingdom. We do believe in this generous God. God is going to give us the key to the kingdom. Meaning, we have to share what we have. I know we have little, but by sharing little, we can save many lives. This is one of the mission of the church. Many people need our help here in the U.S. and also overseas. As a Christian, our duty is to help each other because we need each other. Then Jesus said to us again, I'm going to give you the key to the kingdom of God. That's why I put yellow envelope in your pew. If you want to help us, the mission doesn't have to be big. Little thing that you have. Share what you have with other people. If you want to be a missionary, use the envelope. If you want to receive a literature magazine, put your name. If you have no, no money, put your name and you want to receive a magazine, we will send you a magazine for free for one year. And we're telling what we're doing with your generosity. The mission is to share what we have. The mission is to share our life with others, to save other people's lives. Our mission is not to take other people's lives, but our mission is to give a new life to each other. And Jesus is going to say to us, I'm giving you the king key to the kingdom. Church leaders and faithful believers practice charity and patience with one another. Let us pray to the Lord. That temporal rulers and civil leaders resist temptation and root out corruption. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who know the gift of friendship and marriage remain constant in love through every trial. Let us pray to the Lord. 
that those separated by death from those they love take comfort in the promise of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Let this community be healed of every division. Let us pray to the Lord. For our personal intentions and for all whom have asked for our prayers, we pray for the repose of the souls of Father Michael Cedro, Deacon Roland Darwin, Sarah Lee Concepcion, Ogdalia Irizarry, Emilio Vasquez, Porfirio Estevez, and Galileo de Egirio. Let us pray to the Lord. Eternal God, all power is yours to grant. Hear the prayers of your servants and grant what we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is You Alone. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks, Lord our God. 
In a similar way, when suffer was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciple, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.